Hi all, this is Perak, and I will be showing you how to solder white fox as well as give you a few general soldering tips and process. I believe that soldering shouldn't be a hassle, in fact can be very fun. I mean you're basically soldering metal together with more metal. So, to begin with, you will need a white fox PCB. We have one right here. You will also need a plate. You will need switches. I use Gatorons here, Gatoron Blues, um, but of course any Cherry Max or other clones will fit just as well. The switches can be either PCB or plate mount, as the PCB supports both. Optional, LEDs. Flanges 3mm, also known as T1, or 2x3x4mm rectangular. I have here some regular flangeless LEDs, which will work. Uh, any color should work, but you may get slightly different brightness levels depending on their color and voltage you draw. An even more optional component for LEDs is doing a SIP socket mod. I'm not going to cover this mod here, but if you're doing it, it's worth knowing that it's probably easier to do it before putting the switches into the plate. Soldering iron. I will use a JBC soldering iron. This is the actual tool here. Um, it's expensive, definitely not needed for a beginner. Um, it is obviously quite a nice iron. Any um, most inexpensive temperature controlled soldering irons such as HECO 936 uh, or its clones will do an adequate job. But if you want a little bit more performance, look for the TS100 OLED iron. Uh, it costs about 60 to $70 depending on where you get it from. Or a HECO 888 which costs about 90 to 100 again depends where you're at and uh, any potential discounts. Um, the HECO will give you a bit more options with tips and having it readily be available in most shops, unlike the TS100, which usually can only be obtained via the internet. Tip-wise, you want to use a chisel-type tip to get a bit more contact with the joint. For through-hole use, you definitely want a chisel tip uh, because you want it to cover about the size of the pad I will try to demonstrate here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, and you generally want it to be about the same size as the pad, slightly smaller. You don't want it to be much larger or significantly smaller than the pad. Um, you want to have it be about 2 or 3 millimeters wide for general through hole use. Avoid using conical tips. I have one somewhere here. Here it is. This is a regular conical tip. Um, you want to avoid using one of these unless you use it um, like facing the joint by the side here like this. Um, because there is not enough coverage area on the tip to get a proper solder contact. Um, so next you will want something to clean the soldering tip. Zoom out a little bit here. Um, I recommend brass wool. Here in my JBC solder, in my JBC stand, I have uh, some brass wool, um, and you basically just stab it and kind of poke the tip around in it a little bit. Very convenient. Um, you can get a ten pack of these from Mauser or DigiKey. Um, Oki slash Metcal makes them, or also it's available by a company called Easy Braid. I find brass wool better as the temperature of the tip doesn't quite drop quite as much as with a sponge. If you do use a wet sponge, make sure it's a cellular sponge and have it slightly damp. It should never be soaking wet. Next, you will need some solder wire. Um, I'm not going to be able to show it to you quite exactly the brand of it. Um, I use Kester. Um, it's kind of just wound up on the spool all the way back in the work in my workbench, so I just kind of pull it along here. Um, you will want it to be 6337. Um, that's I consider that ideal if it's leaded. Um, it solidifies as soon as you remove the heat when it's 6337. It's also called eutectic solder. Uh, 6040 will will work just as well. It just won't solidify immediately. It will take like a second or two to solidify once you remove the heat. Um, for thickness, I prefer. Uh, 0.031 inches. It is a good compromise between solder wire that is used for through hole 
and that which is used for surface mounted components. If you pick a solder wire that is too thick, then you have a bit of a hard time controlling exactly how much solder goes into the joint. And if you pick one that is too thin, then you will just keep feeding and feeding and feeding into the joint until it fills up. Um, your solder wire should have a rosin activated or rosin mildly activated array RMA core. Uh, this is also known as no clean flux, as you can leave it on the board when you're done soldering. It won't cause any long-term issues. Don't use water clean core or especially acid flux core solders because uh, those can be conductive and acid core is even worse because it can definitely damage your circuit board and eat away at it when it remains there. Don't use it. It's for things like soldering pipes and the like. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, brands for your solder, uh, Multicore, Kester, Indium, Alpha, pretty much any brand will do as long as you observe um, the proper solder composition for your leaded or unleaded, as well as um, your rosin core. Um, if you use leaded solder, just clean your work area when you're done and wash your hands with cold water after you solder to clean off any potential lead residue of your hands. Uh, keep in mind that lead does not actually go into the air when you solder, it's just the rosin fumes. Um, so you don't have to worry about breathing lead, which is one of the scary things that people sometimes mention. Optional. Uh, liquid flux. Uh, for liquid flux, I use this. It's uh, MG Chemicals 835. Uh, you might need it. It's optional. But if you find that your j your solder joints are just not quite as good as you would like them, uh, just brush off a tiny little bit of flux on there and try again. It will work just fine. Um, optional number two, desoldering wick. I have a desoldering wick here. It's a tech spray desoldering wick. Again, you might want to use it in conjunction with flux um <coughs> so that it will work quite nicely. Um, the soldering pump, um, the brands vary. Uh, again, some people have different preferences for the soldering pumps go. Some work better, some work worse. I don't use a desoldering pump, so unfortunately I can't make any recommendations regarding it. I use a desoldering station, which is, again, considerable overkill for a hobbyist user. Next, safety. Um, if you want, you can use safety glasses. Um, this avoids flux splatter. Um, sometimes the flux is a bit too reactive and it might splatter into your eyes if you're really close to the joint and you know, having very hot flux hitting your eye is not good. So safety glasses are recommended. You better be safe than sorry. Don't wear synthetic clothing. Um, if you happen to drop your iron or come into con contact with synthetic clothing, it will melt into your skin. That's not good. Keep your hair along with any pets or kids back. Again, this is hot stuff. We'll give you, um, you know, second or third degree burns quite easily. Um, let's see what else. Um, solder on a heatproof surface have a mat here. Um, this is a rubber mat, not a vinyl mat. A rubber mat will resist solder heat much better than a vinyl mat. It won't melt uh, like a vinyl mat, so definitely pick a vinyl mat if you're going to go for a soldering mat. Uh, make sure to have some sort of a holder, holder or rest for putting the solder iron down. Um, I have one here. This is specifically made for JBC irons, but Anything that you can put your solder iron on that is heatproof will work just as well. Um, again, I mentioned that while you're soldering, you'll have uh, rosin fumes coming off of the solder. They're not particularly harmful for most studies that I've read. Uh, even over decades of constant exposure, fumes from unleaded solder are actually uh, much worse for your lungs as opposed to leaded because unleaded has to use much more active flux and flux that contains various additives in addition to just regular rosin and it smells pretty bad and yeah it's kind of worse for your lungs 
remember that again fumes are not vaporization of lead you need much much higher temperatures than what you're going to be using to solder to have actual lead vaporization it just won't happen during a regular soldering um, still flux fumes are an eye and respiratory irritant so if you for example have asthma uh, have just a small fan near your soldering area sucking away your fumes or a fan with carbon activated filter now then we'll put our PCB aside for a moment we'll get our plate the first step is to mount your switches into your plate the front of the plate is a side where the countersink bevels I'll show you the countersink bevels um, they're over here let me focus in a little bit these are the countersink bevels you can see that there is a slight edge to them um, this goes on the top so we want the bevel side up to make this mistake um, so there's also the uh, sort of the front of the plate and the downside of the plate or again you know, the top and the bottom um, the bottom is where the space bar cutout is you see this wide area with just a single switch that's the bottom um, so and you also want to mount your switches with the LED hole facing up so for example I will take my switch here and just clip it in like that just push it down and I'll do a few more Again, all of them should be facing up. Just like that. Okay. And just keep on doing the switches until you have all the placements filled up. Um, your plate will be specific to your layout, so you don't have to worry about not putting in some switches into some places or putting in too many switches you'll definitely want to populate all of the switch placements in this particular plate and i'll just keep populating this and i'll be back once i'm done